Most men think they need more supplements, more complicated training programs, more hours in the gym. But the truth is, your body only builds muscle through one master switch. And most people never flip it properly. And when you don't, you can eat all the protein you want, you can train six days a week, you can sleep well and you'll still look exactly the same. Today I'm going to show you the real muscle building mechanism inside your cells, the one that decides whether you stay skinny, stay average or finally trigger the growth you're actually capable of. It's called mTOR and once you know how to activate it properly, you'll build muscle faster with less effort and less wasted time. This is the stuff I wish someone told me 10 years ago. Let's get into it. Most fitness advice overcomplicates things. You don't need a biochemistry degree to understand muscle growth, but you do need to understand the one switch that controls it. Inside your cells, you have two pathways constantly battling each other. AMPK is basically your body's energy saving mode, the setting that kicks in during fatigue, fasting, or a calorie deficit. mTOR is the opposite, it's your growth mode. That's the pathway responsible for protein synthesis, muscle hypertrophy and deep repair. If AMPK is dominant, you won't grow, no matter how hard your training is. If mTOR is dominant, your body becomes a muscle building machine. The goal isn't to sit in mTOR 24 seven, that actually causes problems long term. The goal is to activate intelligently in short pulses, right when your body is ready to repair. Think of it like a light switch. You train, you damage muscle, body says, okay, turn on mTOR so we can rebuild this stronger. And this is where most guys get lost. They train hard, but the lifestyle keeps AMPK switched on. Stress, low sleep, fasting, poor recovery. So they never actually flip the growth switch. When you understand this balance, every single thing you do, meals, protein timing, training style, suddenly makes perfect sense. Now let's talk about something most men have never heard of, the leucine threshold. And this is when 90% of your muscle gains are won or lost. You need to hit a certain leucine trigger to stimulate mTOR strongly enough to start muscle protein synthesis. Leucine is one of the branch chain amino acids and it's basically the signal your body uses to tell mTOR, right, time to build. But here's the issue. Most men think eating random amounts of protein all day is enough. It's not. You need around 2.5 to 3 grams of leucine per meal to maximize mTOR activation. That usually means 30 to 40 grams of high quality protein per meal. Chicken, whey, eggs, beef, Greek yogurt are perfect. Plant-based protein can work, but you'll need more. If you miss this leucine threshold, you miss the growth stimulus. And now you understand why grazing all day doesn't work. Your meals never hit the signal strongly enough to activate mTOR. And here's another thing most men forget. As you age, your leucine threshold increases. So if you're over 30, 40, 50, you need more protein per meal than you did at 18. Now let's bring in the first real study. Leucine regulates translation initiation of protein synthesis in skeletal muscle after exercise. Journal of Applied Physiology. And this study is important because it confirms something men still don't understand today. It showed that leucine directly activates mTOR and ramps up muscle protein synthesis after training. Not protein in general, not any amino acids, leucine specifically. What's even more interesting is how quickly it works. The researchers found that when leucine levels spiked, mTOR signals increased almost instantly, meaning your body switches into growth mode fast as long as you hit that leucine threshold. It also showed that without enough leucine, even a high protein meal doesn't fully switch on mTOR. In other words, you can eat 50 grams of a low leucine protein source and still get a weaker response than 30 grams of a leucine rich source like whey or eggs. This is why the leucine threshold is everything. It's a difference between eating protein and actually building muscle. Now I want to talk about timing because this is where the conversation becomes more practical. You've heard people say protein timing doesn't matter. That's half true. If you're an average gym goer, just trying to get enough protein per day, then yeah, timing isn't everything. But if your goal is to maximize mTOR pulses to build the most muscle in the shortest time, then timing matters a lot. The ideal times to trigger strong mTOR activation are Within two hours after training, your cells are more sensitive. First protein meal of the day, your body is empty, so mTOR responds more aggressively. Before bed, optional, especially if your overall protein intake earlier was weak. And here's something people rarely talk about. Protein every two hours actually blunts mTOR. 
it keeps the signal low and constant instead of giving you powerful spikes. What you want are clear, strong pulses. Now let's move into training because this is where everything starts to start together. Most men do a great job activating mTOR with protein and then sabotage the entire process with the way they train. They get the nutrition right, but the workouts send the opposite signal. Every rep you do either tells your body grow or maintain. There's no neutral. Here's how to maximize your mTOR activation window with your workouts without training longer, just smarter and harder. Take sets close to failure and I don't mean stopping when it feels uncomfortable. I mean genuinely pushing yourself until you're one to two reps away from true failure. Stopping six reps early is basically sending your body a message that the muscle doesn't need to adapt. mTOR responds to effort, not movement. Use slow eccentrics because the lowering phase of the lift is where you create the most mechanical tension and micro damage. A controlled two to three second negative forces your muscle fibers to work harder, which triggers more mTOR activation afterwards. Most people rush this part and lose half the stimulus. Use progressive overload consistently. That doesn't have to mean adding weight every week forever. It can mean more reps, better technique, longer time under tension or even a cleaner range of motion. As long as something improves, your body has a reason to grow. Stagnant training equals stagnant mTOR response. Use big movements first because they recruit far more muscle fibers than isolation work. When you start your session with squats, deadlifts, presses or rows, you're lighting up a much bigger surface area. More fibers recruited means a stronger mTOR signal afterwards. That's why compound lifts should anchor your sessions. And on top of that, your intent matters. Training with purpose, focus and tension will always be mindless reps. People underestimate how much your nervous system influences your hormonal and cellular response to training. Let's move on to study two. Resistance exercise enhances mTOR and MAPK signaling in human muscle. American Journal of Physiology, Endocrinology and Metabolism. This study showed that properly performed resistance training directly activates mTOR signaling, especially when progressive overload is applied consistently. The takeaway is simple. The quality of your sets determines the quality of your growth. This is why intense controlled training matters and why pump only Instagram workouts don't deliver long-term hypertrophy. They look good on camera, but they don't create the mechanical tension or progression needed for real mTOR activation. Now, let's talk about the things that kill your gains because you can activate mTOR perfectly and still shut it off instantly. Here are the biggest mTOR killers. Chronic calorie deficit. Big deficits destroy mTOR activation. Poor sleep. You can stimulate mTOR all day, but recovery happens at night. Excessive training volume. Too much lifts cortisol, increases AMPK and shuts mTOR down. Too much cardio. Long duration cardio raises AMPK. Keep it separate from lifting days. And finally, inconsistent protein intake. One strong meal doesn't fix a weak day. All right, let me walk you through a simple daily structure that works ridiculously well and it's easy to follow. Meal one, your first loosening trigger. Start the day with 30 to 40 grams of protein, eggs, whey, Greek yogurt, whatever you prefer. If you like coffee before training, have it here. Then we train, focus on tension, slow reps and progressive overload. This is where you prime your muscle for mTOR. Post-workout meal, loosening trigger number two. Again, 30 to 40 grams of protein, but this time add 40 to 60 grams of carbs and a bit of salt. Why? Because carbs spike insulin and insulin boosts mTOR even more after training. It's the perfect window. Dinner, leucine trigger number three. Same idea, 30 to 40 grams of protein for something like chicken, beef or fish. Before bed, optional, a bit of casein or Greek yogurt if you want to support overnight muscle protein synthesis. Not essential, but helpful. Study three, protein ingestion induces muscle protein synthesis via activation of mTOR C1 in human skeletal muscle, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. This study basically confirmed that it's the essential amino acids, especially leucine, that switch on mTOR C1 and drive muscle protein synthesis. So when you structure your meals like this, you're hitting that signal multiple times per day, and that's how you grow. Now here's something interesting. Testosterone doesn't directly activate mTOR, but the two work together like a perfect team. Testosterone increases your mechanical tension response, your fiber recruitment, your satellite cell activity, 
your overall sensitivity to protein intake. So think of testosterone as the volume knob for mTOR. Higher testosterone, louder mTOR response. This is why men with optimal testosterone grow easier. The mTOR switch flips harder. Before we wrap up, here are some quick upgrades you can add. Creatine, boost performance, boosts mTOR indirectly. Two to three grams leucine added to weaker meals, especially useful for plant-based eaters. Salt, pre-workout, improves pumps and volume. Cluster sets, builds tension without early fatigue. Cold exposure, avoid straight after training, wait over four hours. Now let's talk about the things you want to keep to a minimum because these are the quiet killers of progress. Fasted training. When you train with no fuel, MPK takes over and mTOR stays low. High fat meals right after you work out. They slow digestion and blunt the speed of that post training protein hit. Constant snacking. You get weak, shallow pulses instead of strong leucine spikes. Staying up late. Recovery tanks, hormones crash, growth drops. High intense interval training, too close to lifting. It's spikes AMPK and interferes with the strength sessions and training just for the pump instead of progression feels good but it doesn't move the needle long term these sound like small things but they slow your progress more than you realize now thanks for watching this video remember to like share and subscribe drop a comment below and i'll see you in the next one